I really like Redis and not only do I feel that way but so many other developers do too and that's for a really good reason Redis is fast it's efficient Redis is cheap it really just is an incredible piece of technology but unfortunately the good news kind of end there three days ago on March 20th 2024 Redis the company behind well Redis dropped an absolute bombshell the licensing of Redis is changing. The bottom line is Redis is no longer open source and that sucks for a lot of people. And also this fundamentally goes against all the morals of what Redis stood for as a technology, what the founder intended Redis to be. So dude, let's enjoy a cup of coffee together. Let's see what changed. Let's see who has to bear these changes because spoiler alert, yes, this will actually have very real consequences for a lot of people and also what this means for companies, right? I work at Upstash, one of our main core offerings is Redis. Do we have to stop this now because of the licensing changes? Do you have to stop using Redis as a user? Let's get into it. So this is the blog post I'm talking about. Redis adopts dual source available licensing. And when first hearing this, it doesn't sound that bad to be real, right? Future Redis releases will continue to offer free and permissive use of the source code under two different licenses now, whereas before it was one single license. These releases will combine advanced data types and processing engines previously only available in Redis stack. Now, here comes the important part, right? Listen to this. Beginning today, all future versions of Redis will be released with source available licenses. So not open source. Starting with Redis 7.4, Redis will be dual licensed under the Redis source available license and the server side public license. Consequently, Redis will no longer be distributed, and this is the important part, under the three clause Berkeley software distribution, BSD. Now this BSD license that Redis traditionally was always published under contains three clauses right here that allow you to use the software for basically whatever you want. First off, redistributions of source code must retain the above copyright notice, this list of conditions and the following disclaimer. The second one basically boils down to if you redistribute Redis in a binary form, then this binary must also reproduce the above copyright notice, so it's very clear who is the copyright holder of the software. And lastly, you cannot advertise with the name of the contributors or the copyright holders to endorse your software. And that's it. If you meet these criteria, then you can do with the software pretty much whatever you want. That includes commercial purposes. This commercial use is no longer as is possible in the new licenses and that is the most important change that was introduced in this you know blog post in the license change. Right here the new license is a permissive non-copyleft license allowing the right to use, copy, distribute, make available and prepare derivative works of the software but very important but it has two primary limitations. You may not and this is the important part, commercialize the software or provide it to others as a managed service. And then secondly, but this is nowhere near as important as the first one, you may not obscure or remove any licensing, copyright or other notices. So basically Redis wants to be credited for being the copyright holder of the Redis software. Because the thing is Redis, the company also offers managed Redis and that is where the money is at. So basically, yes, this is a money thing because currently there are a lot of Redis providers and one of them, arguably the most important from the perspective of Redis the company, is literally Redis. Redis, the company, they offer a managed Redis service and their competition include companies like Railway, Elasticash, Upstash or DigitalOcean that offer managed Redis. What these changes mean is any one of these other providers that are in direct competition with Redis, the company, are basically not allowed to distribute their Redis anymore. Any company that directly uses the Redis source code and make it available to other people may not do so anymore unless, right, there are exceptions to this, unless they are a Redis partner. So you have to partner with Redis the company now if you want to offer Redis as a managed solution. Integration and managed service provider partners, which are the companies that offer Redis source code and distribute it, operating and delivering solutions that leverage Redis Community Edition and Enterprise in a non-competitive offering by entering into a partnership with Redis. And I don't need to tell you that a company offering Redis and making the life of their competitors much harder because they now need to partner with the competitor that controls the pricing. I don't need to tell you that that's probably a pretty bad thing. Because here's the thing, any company like Railway Elasticash from AWS that Redis the company deems a competitor 
Well, they can simply no longer permit them to use the new versions of the source code of Redis for free of charge. And basically they control the price. If you control the price of your competitors, of course you're gonna make it pretty damn expensive to use your software. So you are the main provider of Redis for anyone to choose. And this arbitrary definition of if you're building a solution that leverages Redis but does not specifically compete with Redis itself, there is no impact. But Redis, the company, defines what is a competitor to them and they can basically choose to make their life harder. This change is only targeted at one very specific group of people. You can basically self-host Redis just as well as before, right? If you have your own server, you still have the source code for Redis. The source code is never the problem. It will still be public, right? That's why there is the they're using the source available license, right? Because the source code is not hidden. It will not be. Just the commercial use for other companies of Redis is now nowhere near as easy as before. What that also means is by very definition of open source, right here, Redis is now in conflict with the first kind of rule of open source. The license shall not restrict any party from selling or giving away the software as a component of whatever, whatever, whatever. So basically you can use the software commercially. With Redis, this is no longer possible and thereby by definition, at least from the OSD, right? Redis is actually no longer open source. Now, what makes this entire situation much worse is that Redis, the company, did not actually make Redis the software. And this is a complete turnaround in their morals, right? As I mentioned in the intro of this video. So let me give you a very brief overview of how Redis came about, inspired by this article on Momento right here. Super good article. I'm going to link it in the description. And let's take a quick look at a timeline of how Redis came about. And you'll notice the irony that is behind this announcement. Because if you don't know, Redis actually has a really long history, about 15 years. It started in 2009 when an Italian software developer named Antires, and I'm probably butchering his name right here. So he launched Redis in 2009. And four years later, there was a distributed Redis provider, basically a company that took Redis and made it available in a scalable and reliable way that was called Garantia Data. And this company, Garantia Data, is actually what's known as Redis today after they rebranded. But we're gonna get there, trust me. This was in 2013. And basically this company, Garantia Data, wanted to rebrand to something called Redis DB. But because this guy owned the software copyright of Redis, he refused to let this happen. He said, hey, please don't do that. Don't rebrand to Redis DB. This name, Redis, is mine. I own this, so please don't call your company that. And Garantia Data actually listened. They stopped the rebrand. However, a short while later, and that is in 2014, right here, they did eventually rebrand, but not to Redis DB as they initially planned, but Garantia Data in 2014 rebranded to Redis Labs. Garantia Data changes company name to Redis Labs. This was in January 29th, 2014, so very early in the year. Garantia Data, the leader in enterprise class Redis and memcached solutions for developers, today announced its new company name, Redis Labs. And here's the thing, right? After they rebranded, you know what happened later in 2015? Well, the founder of Redis that launched Redis back in 2009, so at this point, six years ago, Antiras, the Italian software developer, he actually became a part of Garantia Data that was now known as Redis Labs. And this joining from the original founder of Redis into the now Redis Labs actually is the very foundation of arguably the most important event that happened in this entire timeline. And that is in 2018, because the original founder and Therese actually transfers the IP and copyrights over to the company. So the company that was earlier known as Garantia Data in 2018 actually got the naming rights and the software rights transferred over to them from the original founder. And now as a company, originally only a distributor of Redis, now actually own the entire rights of the software. And from Antiris' perspective, this was not a bad thing, right? He was always very, very sure that Redis will remain BSD licensed. Essentially, this translates to Redis will remain open source. Now, this is an article he published 2039 days ago, in which some people assume that, hey, Redis was doing a license change, and he's clarifying, no, this is not the case. Redis is and will remain BSD license. So he's very adamant on, hey, Redis, yes, it will remain an open source technology. But this transfer of the copyrights now gave Garantia Data, now known as Redis Labs, the entire rights 
to change that. In 2021, the company Redis Labs, that was earlier known as Garantia Data, actually rebranded again. After being known as Redis Labs, they rebranded to just Redis. So that's how the company that we now know as Redis, the Redis.com, actually came about. Way earlier, Garantia Data, then Redis Labs, now rebranding as Redis. And the transferation of, or transfer, whatever you want to call it, of the copyrights actually set the very foundation for what happened three days ago. Even though it goes very much against what the original founder always intended for Redis to be, the company can now make the decision to actually change the license to not be open source anymore. Because the thing is, one event I didn't tell you about yet that's super important for this is that in 2021, the original founder actually, and that happened in 2020, he stepped away from the company. So Antires leaves Redis labs right before they rebranded and this looks super ugly i'm just gonna make this a bit longer there we go he left redis Labs, so he no longer has control over what happened especially after transferring the ip and the entire copyrights over to the company he has no say anymore in what happens to redis and that's very unfortunate because that set the very foundation for what happened three days ago so the question is who has to bear these changes now it's very certain that these changes will come into effect who has to deal with it, right? And the most important group of people that have to deal with it are probably the contributors. There's over 700 contributors on the Redis project and it's super painful to see that the project was built on their backs and now changed the license so they don't really have a point in contributing anymore. And not only does it suck for them, but this also mainly sucks for any company building on top of Redis, which are, for example, AWS Elasticash, who made a ton of money from offering Redis in a scalable and distributed, reliable kind of way. Also, any provider that offers the Redis source code, like Railway, there's two options, right? Either they will stop using it or they will actually agree to partner with Redis Labs. And that's most likely not going to be cheap because if you have competitors, of course, you're going to make it pretty expensive for them. So people will come to you if it's your software, right? Chances are either Railway or any other Redis provider will either have to stop the service or charge a big premium for it. At which point, people are probably just going to switch to the competitor anyways and the services will get rid of their Redis offering in the first place. Now, I work at Upstash, so what I mentioned in the very beginning, right? One of our core offerings is Redis. What does this mean for us? And the thing is, Redis is not actually equal to Redis. Not every company offering Redis, like Elasticash or Railway, actually use the Redis source code to do so. Because Redis, right, as a very, very simplistic way of thinking about things, it just memory as a service, right? It provides access to data, a key value store in memory. Now, Redis, of course, also persists stuff to the disk and so on. It's much more than this with all its data types, but it's in its most simplistic form, it's just this, right? It's memory on a server that is provided to you as a service, either on your servers or somewhere else. The way you go about implementing this does not actually have to follow the Redis source code. And that is why companies like Upstash, for example, where I work, we have our very own implementation of this very basic idea of memory as a service. We have an engine that is written in Go, a multi-tenant engine that does not actually use the core Redis source code. And the licensing changes that Redis introduced here, of course, can only apply to the source code they hold the copyright to, which is not an engine that we wrote from scratch, but it is an engine that only applies to their source code and services that use their own source code, which as far as I know, are, for example, Railway and Elasticash or DigitalOcean, but there are other providers next to Upstash that also have their completely own engine. So of course the changes can't apply there. In that case, if you're using Upstash, for example, there will literally be no changes except maybe the name, right? Because there is a section regarding the naming. If something has Redis in the name, then that might need to change now. But besides that, no, there will actually be no changes. So what's next? I think there are two scenarios that are very likely. The first one is that AWS will create a fork of the Redis project up until this point where the license was introduced. By doing this, they can now build on top of the BSD license stuff and not worry about the new license that of course only applies to the future releases. The other very possible scenario, maybe even together with the first scenario, is that there will be a community fork. Basically the same thing. AWS has the financial resources to pull this off and so does the power of a lot of people in the community working together to make a community fork happen. The second version is my favorite because
because it means that everybody that's passionate about the Redis project and has fun in developing will be able to continue to do so with other community members without that restrictive license that's now been introduced. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really proud of how it turned out. So please let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I hope it gave you a really good overview of the events that happened with Redis. That's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.